this is APC, and in today's tutorial, we're going to talk about fade effects. Now, um, the way I'm, I'm going to be showing you how to do fade effects is going to be very similar to particle effects, but it's not quite the same, so that's why I'm not calling the tutorial particle effects. So this is, this is a very useful trick. You can use it to just give your player a cool look, or you can have an exhaust from a car engine or stuff, or it possibly is basically endless, endless. So, let's get started. So let's first clear the sprite. sprite. Call SPR only, because we are only sprite. Edit sprite. Add some image. Let's make it 16 by 16. That way, it'll look a little bit nicer. And I'm gonna make it blue. Make sure it's uh, a, a radiant color. It has to be like on the edge. See, see, this is blue at full, full, but one of these has to be full. It has to be like on the edge of the color wheel, sort of. In order for this to work. So, I'm gonna go into objects. Now let's create OBJ player. Now generally I am um, just put in the symbol moving with the, with the keyboard but since I want to change the little and create a path for the player today. So let's just create a path. I'm gonna design it for a square room to be 640 by 640 so let's make four points. First one's gonna be x320 y is zero. That's gonna be y320 x is 640. Next one is going to be X320 and Y640. And the last one is going to be Y320 and X at 0. So the final result that you see looks like a diamond. Make sure it's on close. And make sure it's in the curve. So there, yeah, circle. So now I just create a room and make sure that it's 640 by 640 so the path will get in there exactly. Alright, now we're going to our part. So, in the creation event, we are first off going to make sure that it follows the path. So in order to do that, you jump the code path start. First part of it is which path you want, and the default name for our path is path zero. So we're just going to name path zero. The next part is what speed we want the player to go at. We're going to have the player go at ten. And the next part is called end action, which I'm just going to require a little bit of explaining. So I'm going to make a little note here. End action is what we want to happen when it reaches the end of the path. So you put down 0, that means that it stops the end of the path. Put down 1, that means that it will restart at the first point of the, of the, of the path. Put down 2, it will restart at the um, current position. And if you press 3, it will repeat the path in reverse. So in this case, you want to just keep moving. It, the, since I made a circle and the last point is the first point, it doesn't matter one or two. But I guess I'll just do one. And then the last one, it says absolute. That means you want it to start from your current position, or do you want it to start from the position that's in the path? So in this case, we'll do absolute. So that will for so that will just be true. All right. So now our path is set. Now we got a series of variables when you put in. I'll just call them fade variables. Okay, first one. Global dot initial speed average equals five. I put in global because it's gonna be referenced by the fade object later. And the name so long is just to make sure they understand it better. I will head them all out right now and then I'll explain them. So I'll see you in a second. Alright, so once you finish that, I'm going to split up into four groups to make it easier on you. There's just the four groups that it's split up in. Alright, so I'll explain these 
better later so you'll understand it, but for now, and for the color, I'll, I'll explain that right now. Um, global dot color will be the color of your fade, and image blend will be the color of your player. That's why this isn't global, because it pertains to the current object. Now, you might be a little confused by this part of it. We, you could also do some like C dot blue or something like that, which is actually with like this right here will be the same as C dot gray. And this right here would be the same as C blue. What I like about this is that you have more um, control over it. So when we put down make color, I guess technically it's make color R V. Then um, what it'll do is this it'll take this R G B value and use that as the color. So in this case, one two eight one two eight one two eight. That's halfway of scale each time. So that'll turn out to gray. And in this case, you're red, you're green, 355 blue, so this turns out blue. So you have a lot more freedom this way. Alright, so I'm going to set that, but before I do that, I'm to set the sprite. I just forgot to, to set the sprite earlier. So we go into the step event. And in the step event, we want to create the fade object. So instance, instance create at your position obj fade, which we haven't made yet, but we'll make that in a second. And just copy the same code again. That way, we'll, it'll um, be nice and thick. This is like the perfect amount of having two each step. All right. So now let's create object fade. OJ fade. Take the sprite. Now go to the creation event. First of all, let's paste the variable that I copied earlier. And it change into one big comment so that we can just reference them and just make them. So first off, we want to set the speed of them, of the fade of it. So, I'll type down the code and I'll explain it. Alright, so this code right here, I, I'm going to call it the, the range concept. And make sure you understand this concept because I'm using it several more times. Think of it, you have number line. In this case, our average speed equals 5, and our speed range equals 1. So think of it as, on average, it's going to be like around 5, and then you have like an area around 5 that has a width of 1. So you want it to randomly come out between 4.5 and 5.5. So in order to make that happen, you start with the average of 5, then you subtract half of the range in order to get the minimum value. So in this case, this whole thing right here would be 4.5, which is the minimum value in this case. And then you add this. This is basically randomly selecting value from your range. And the reason I do the times 10 right here and divided by 10 right here is because if I just do random one, I believe it'll count as one every single time. I'm not sure whether zero is included in the random variable or not, but either way, it won't look that random. So first, I multiply the range by ten within here, and I divide it by ten right here, so it can become like point one or point two, like that. So that it'll look more varied that way. So now I'm basically going to copy this code, and I'm going to change everything. Everything says speed direction because we were basically going to do the same thing for direction. Alright. Now comes the part where we're taking these fade variables. We've already covered all these variables. So fade. Fade variable is how much image alpha is going to decrease or the transparency is going to decrease every step. And we're going to be using range the same range theory we did earlier, so I suppose you can just copy it again. Only right here, put down fade, and just replace these things fade. Only keep in mind that fade isn't actually a variable. It's going to be affecting it later. Not just this. And now the last part is change color. So we want the color of this thing, or image blend, be whatever we set the global color to so the global color. There you go. 
Now let's go into the step event of the fade object. And now we're going to take into account the fade part. So just say that image alpha minus equals fade, which we calculated earlier. Now, if you remember correctly, or, if you remember correctly, we still have these ongoing variables that I haven't really covered yet. So I'm going to copy this again and put it in here so I can still reference them. And um, so ongoing is after when it's initially created. How how much is that variable going to change? This is going to be like very similar to the range concept, but slightly different. For one thing, we're going to need a plus because it's not going to actually set the value. It's going to be add something new onto it. And we're going to make it negative global ongoing speed range divided by two. Rather than starting with the set value of the average, we're basically starting with this and we're adding this onto it. So you could think of it as speed equals speed plus, which is the same thing. And this would be the initial. So right now you already have, by subtracting half of the um, speed range, or the ongoing speed range, you are, you already have the minimum. So now we just need to add the random randomization part. And there we have it. And now we're going to do the exact same thing for direction. So paste that, and then here put down direction. The last thing we do have to do is one more thing we have to figure out with image alpha. And this is instead of this, it's happening every second. And once it becomes invisible, or the image of alpha becomes less than zero, then we want it to be destroyed. So type out if image alpha is less than zero. Destroy. Alright, now that is um a lot of code gets covered, and odds are I made a mistake, so let's test it. So, you can see the particle that looks, the player is going nicely in a circle like I told it to. It's pretty cool, and I'm going to tell you how to mess around and make it look nicer to your needs.